Hi there, my name's Andy and if you've seen some of my other videos you may have seen this Eddystone S680X radio uh, that I've been repairing. Uh, I was repairing it uh, with a view to selling it for a friend of mine but I've kind of fallen in love with it and uh, I've bought it for myself. This radio would have been manufactured back in the 1950s uh, by the Eddystone Company and uh, this is a uh, old photograph showing uh, the factory where it was constructed. It's a 15 valve communications receiver, a very sturdy construction the section in the middle there is a cast aluminium block and that houses all of the sensitive tuning components. And again uh, on this uh, under chassis photograph of the equipment you can see the cast aluminium uh, box in the centre of the chassis. And, uh, very difficult to work on the valve bases because they're buried right underneath in the uh, right hand section of uh, each of those four chambers and it uh, would be very difficult to get a soldering iron down there now. I think uh, they would have been constructed uh, sequentially and the bits added um, from the bottom up so uh, not looking forward to having to replace any uh, tubular capacitors down there. When I first got the radio, I also had with it a user manual and a circuit diagram. Although on close ex inspection of the circuit diagram, realized it uh, leaves uh, a bit to be desired as it's uh, an old photocopy and uh, some of the decimal points are missing off some of the component values and uh, things like that. So I, I thought I'll uh, investigate and see if I can get a, a better copy and um, I haven't been able to find a, a, a source of a good copy so I thought I would retrace the drawing and um, find out any values that are missing from the radio itself. So what I did was photographed the circuit diagram that I had and then uh, pasted that into Photoshop. Uh, I did that in uh, four separate sections and they were the four photographs that you've just seen. So th these are the four photographs that I've pieced together in Photoshop and it looks as though I've torn them apart but I've actually uh, cut them in Photoshop and spread them out a little bit as um, the original draftsman had got a, a very squashed up drawing and I wanted to create some space between the components. This is a screenshot of the uh, Photoshop uh, screen and uh, the image size or the canvas size actually worked out at about 2.4 meters wide so uh, I was working on a very high resolution. I created multiple layers for capacitors, resistors, coils, switches, valves etc and then drew one component so I drew one uh, capacitor and then copied and pasted it uh, on its layer uh, simply tracing over the draftsman's original drawing and here I've put in the switches and the coils and uh, the valves. Again, they're each on their own layer, so I only have to draw a, uh, a component once and then uh, copy and paste it uh, as needed, oh, and orientate it as needed. Next, I put in all of the connecting wires. Uh, to couple up the components uh, just as you would wire <laughs> a, uh, a piece of equipment I guess so uh, get all of the components in place and then start wiring. 
all the time I'm working with a, uh, a, w a layer of white uh, over the original drawing and underneath my uh, circuit so as I can switch that on and see uh, my work presented against a, a white background and uh, here you can see the circuit with the uh, the white background and um, here I've got the component identification uh, uh, numbers and letters in place and this is the final circuit so uh, I've checked it and checked it and I, I think it's perfect I found several uh, original copies of uh, different circuits for this radio uh, but they all have faults in them uh, this circuit is copied from one where the original has two C37's in it I've seen a uh, another version where the component identifications are incorrect and uh, one where the uh, switch numbers are missing uh, they all seem to be the same basic circuit I can't find any component wiring changes uh, but I say that there do seem to be some errors in some of the component identifications Anyway, the reason I've uh, gone through all this trouble is about a week's work uh, in doing this. Um, I uh, have joined the Eddystone user group, um, which uh, you can find on the net. And there's an awful lot of information available. But uh, I wanted to be able to put a, a good copy of a, a clean drawing on uh, that website. So you will be able to find this drawing um, uh, in a little while at the Eddystone user group and I'll, I'll put a, a link in the uh, about uh, this video or the, the little box underneath that um, gives you further information anyway I hope you found that interesting um, thanks for watching bye bye